Modern slavery is not just about physical bondage and exploitation. It's also about how the global financial system traps millions of people in debt, poverty, and dependence. Slavery still exists today. In fact, it increased during the pandemic as criminals took advantage of the vulnerable and desperate. Modern slavery is also a huge source of illicit profits, with billions of dollars passing through the banking system undetected. Financial institutions have a crucial role to play in combating modern slavery, but are they doing enough? Let's find out. In today's video, we are going to expose eight forms of modern financial slavery that you may not be aware of. Number one, payday loans. These are short-term, high-interest loans designed to assist borrowers in meeting their financial obligations until their next payday. However, because they must borrow more money to repay their prior debts, many people find themselves entangled in a vicious cycle of debt. Payday lenders frequently impose extortionate charges and interest rates, which can reach 400% annually. Additionally, they employ aggressive and dishonest methods of debt collection, including making harassing phone calls, threatening legal action, and taking automated withdrawals from bank accounts. Payday loans are particularly common in low-income and minority populations, where access to traditional financial services is limited. The best way to deal with payday loans is to avoid them in the first place. If you need money urgently, try to find other sources of income or assistance, such as selling burdensome or redundant belongings, asking for help from your friends or family, or applying for government benefits or charity programs. If you already have payday loans, try to pay them off as soon as possible. Negotiate with your lenders for lower interest rates or payment plans. Do not take out new loans to pay off old ones. Number 2. Mortgage Debt Although owning a home is frequently seen as a sign of success and security, it can also be stressful and worrying for many homeowners. Many homeowners find it difficult to make their monthly payments, particularly in light of rising interest rates, mortgage fees, property taxes, insurance premiums, and maintenance expenditures. In some cases, homeowners who fall behind on their payments may risk foreclosure or eviction. The inability to sell their homes or pay off their loans forces homeowners with mortgage debt to remain in their homes, which might restrict their mobility and flexibility. If you decide to buy a home, it must be one that you can comfortably afford and maintain. Do your research and compare different options before you sign a mortgage contract. Save up for a large down payment to reduce your loan amount and interest rate. Choose a fixed rate mortgage over an adjustable rate mortgage to avoid fluctuations in your monthly payments. If you already have mortgage debt, try to pay it off as soon as possible. Make extra payments whenever you can to reduce your principal and interest. Refinance your mortgage if you can get a lower interest rate or a shorter term. Number 3. Car Loan Debt In many locations, owning a car is frequently important for commuting, working, and living, but it may also be an expensive and deteriorating possession. Many automobile owners take out loans that are longer than the typical length of their vehicle's lives resulting in debt that exceeds the value of their cars. This is referred to as being underwater or upside down on a car loan. In addition to these issues, car loan debt might result in repossession, increased insurance costs, and decreased resale value. Buy a car that you can pay for in cash or with a small loan that you can pay off quickly. Do your research and compare different models and prices before you buy a car. Avoid buying new cars that lose value as soon as you drive them off the lot. Choose a reliable and fuel-efficient car that suits your needs and budget. If you already have car loan debt, try to pay it off as soon as possible. Make extra payments whenever you can to reduce your principal and interest. Sell or trade in your car if you can get more than what you owe on it. Number 4. Student Loan Debt Although education is meant to be a stepping stone to prosperity and opportunity, for many people, it ends up being a burden that drags them down for years. Over 44 million borrowers in the U.S. are burdened with a whopping $1.7 trillion in student debt, and this number is not different in other countries. Many students find it difficult to pay back their debts, particularly in light of rising tuition prices, stagnating incomes, 
and a tight labor market. If they don't repay their loans, some borrowers even risk having their wages garnished, having their tax refunds taken, and having their credit scores lowered. Borrowers' options and prospects are additionally constrained by student debt since they are forced to put off or abandon important life decisions including property purchases, family formation, and career pursuits. The best way to deal with student debt is to prevent it from accumulating in the first place. If you plan to go to college or university, try to find scholarships, grants, or work-study programs that can reduce your tuition fees. Choose a course and a school that match your interests and budget. Avoid taking out more loans than you need. If you already have student debt, try to pay it off as soon as possible. Choose a repayment plan that suits your income and situation. Take advantage of any forgiveness or cancellation programs that you may qualify for. Number 5. Credit Card Debt Credit cards can be practical, helpful instruments for managing cash flow and establishing credit, but they can also be deadly traps for unscrupulous individuals. Over 189 million Americans are burdened by $807 billion in credit card debt in the U.S., and similar numbers exist for other countries. A lot of people use credit cards to cover regular bills like gas, groceries, and utilities. However, they face interest fees that can pile up quickly if they don't pay off their balances in full each month. Other issues include late fees, penalty rates, poor credit ratings, and higher stress might result from credit card debt. Use credit cards responsibly and sparingly. Only use credit cards for purchases that you can afford to pay in cash. Pay off your balance in full every month before the due date. Avoid using credit cards for cash advances or balance transfers. If you already have credit card debt, try to pay it off as soon as possible. Stop using your credit cards until you clear your debt. Pay more than the minimum amount every month and focus on paying off the card with the highest interest rate first. Number 6. Child Support Debt Child support is meant to meet the needs and well-being of children, but for many parents who mostly are men who must pay it, it may also be a cause of contention and difficulty. Many parents are required to pay child support even though they are unable to do so, particularly when they have many families, disabilities, or both. Legal issues like contempt of court, license suspension, passport refusal, and jail time can result from unpaid child support obligations. Child support debt can be tricky and one way of handling them is to request a co-parent agreement. This is a way to negotiate with your co-parent to waive or reduce the amount of child support arrears you owe them. By requesting a co-parent agreement, you can avoid legal consequences and maintain a good relationship with your co-parent and your children. However, you need to have a valid reason for not paying child support, such as financial hardship or change in circumstances, and you need to get the court's approval for any modification. Number 7. Medical Debt Everyone's existence and well-being depend on access to health care, but it can also be incredibly expensive and unreliable. Particularly in the event of crisis, chronic diseases, or absence of insurance, many people are faced with medical costs that they are unable to pay. Medical debt can also have serious consequences, such as bankruptcy, collection lawsuits, wage garnishment, and credit score damage. The best way to deal with medical debt is to prevent it from happening in the first place. If you live in the U.S., get health insurance that covers your needs and budget. If you live in other countries, check your eligibility for public health care or subsidized health care programs. Take care of your health and wellness by eating well, exercising regularly, and avoiding risky behaviors. If you already have medical debt, try to pay it off as soon as possible. Negotiate with your health care providers for lower charges or payment plans. Apply for financial assistance or charity care programs that can reduce or eliminate your medical bills. Number 8. Gambling Debt Many people use gambling as a kind of amusement and recreation. But for some, it may become a serious addiction or compulsion. Over 10 million Americans are affected by the $100 billion gambling debt in the U.S., and the numbers are not different in other countries. Many gamblers seek to recover their losses by borrowing money from a variety of sources, including credit cards, 
payday loans, friends, family, and loan sharks in order to support their habit. Gambling debt can also result in societal issues like family dissolution, domestic abuse, crime, and suicide. One way to deal with gambling debt is to file for bankruptcy. This is a way to legally discharge your gambling debt and start fresh. By filing for bankruptcy, you can get rid of most or all of your unsecured debts, such as credit cards, personal loans, or medical bills. However, bankruptcy has serious consequences, such as damaging your credit score, losing some of your assets, and affecting your future ability to borrow money. Another fix is to enroll in a debt management plan. This is a way to pay off your gambling debt with the help of a nonprofit credit counseling agency. By enrolling in a debt management plan, you can lower your interest rates, consolidate your payments, and get out of debt faster. However, you need to commit to a monthly budget, stop using credit cards, and pay a small fee to the agency. These are just some of the forms of modern financial slavery that exist today. What is your view on the points shared or modern financial slavery in general? Kindly share your opinions in the comments section with community members.